and as a small business owner, I can tell you firsthand how troubling, how difficult, how stressful the last three and a half months have been. And certainly you all are no stranger to that news. But we also know that small business and entrepreneurship is at the heart of Dallas. It's, uh, it's who we are. And Dallas has always been a very business friendly city for small and large organizations. So today, uh, we appreciate you all joining us for this in-depth conversation for the phone call. Hopefully we have some potential funders, investors, and perhaps we on the phone, we also have some folks who are interested in applying for the Revive Dallas Small Business Relief Fund. A Little bit of background on this fund, of course, it's in a collaboration with the Dallas Regional Chamber, uh, the Dallas Citizens Council, with the DEC Network, which is formerly the Dallas Entrepreneurship Center, who is also working with the Communities Foundation of Texas. It's a $5 million fund, and so far as you'll hear momentarily, uh, we've been able to raise about $2 million towards that effort that will help small businesses who are trying to stay in business, particularly women-owned and minority-owned businesses here in the Dallas regional area. So uh, on the call today, we've got several distinguished hosts. We've got Dale Petrosky, who of course is the president and CEO of the Dallas Regional Chamber. We have the Chief Executive Officer of the Dallas Citizens Council, Kelvin Walker, who we'll hear from momentarily. We also have Sajel Desai, who is the Business Engagement Director for Communities Foundation of Texas, who's gonna be available to answer questions. And then of course, a gentleman who uh, needs no introduction for many of us, Trey Bowles, is of course the co-founder co of the DEC, the Dallas Entrepreneurship Center, now the DEC Network, and now the Executive Chairman. So Trey is gonna walk us through a presentation, tell you a little bit about the fund, the progress that we've made so far, and then we're gonna turn it over to Kelvin and Dale to make their comments. We wanna leave plenty of time for questions, so be sure to utilize the chat and the Q&A feature here on the Zoom webinar, and you can put your questions in at any time, and then we'll get to those here after we break from the speakers. So thank you again, everybody, for joining us. <clears throat> We want to make sure we get to our speakers, but mainly we want to hear from you and answer your questions because of, we're really in hopes of getting from that $2 million where we are now to the $5 million mark. So with that, let me hand it over to Trey Bowles. Trey. Great, and thank you um, very much. And thank you for all of you who are able to make it with it, here with us today. We're excited to share with you about the Revived Dallas Small Business Fund and um, specifically talk into what some of the organizations on the call with us have done and are doing to help support the lifeblood of our economy, small businesses. Um, when COVID-19 hit um, North Texas, it blindsided many of us, um, specifically small businesses. And there was such an immediate overwhelming um, effect on businesses that uh, they didn't know what to do. Many of these businesses are going out of business every day. We talk to small businesses every day that are going out of business. And, and so what we tried to start to think about was how could we at the DEC network support, serve and respond to the need that, that our small business and entrepreneur um, friends were having. And so we focused on three main things. The first one was a resource site that would, would be a, a location where we could get people information about funding alternatives. We could get people information about um, uh, webinars and virtual events and things that were being put on by am many amazing organizations across the, um, uh, across the ecosystem. Second was a mentorship component. Um, that's a really key component and differentiator of this fund. But what we did was we launched the Fast Start Mentor Network. The goal of that was to do directly and immediately connect um, a small business owner with a mentor, a subject matter expert, somebody who has been there and done their business before that could be there as a resource to offer strategic, to offer to, ta to tactical support. And then finally was the question of money. And we knew that there were some great um, programs that had been released by the, by the federal government, some at the state, some at the local level, now even the county level. Um, all were being there to support them, but there was something that stemmed from some conversations that we had with the Dallas Regional Chamber and the Dallas Citizens Council around um, allowing and engaging the businesses in North Texas, the philanthropists, the foundations, the family offices, the individuals who wanted to support and respond to the needs that they were seeing um, from the community. I think North Texas, Dallas County, the city of Dallas has done such a great job 
um, responding to the personal needs, the medical needs of the, the people in our community, but we didn't want to forget the, uh, the emergency and the state of the emergency the small businesses were in and beginning to look at and recognize what the effect of going out of business could do to them, what that could cause when you look at the number of employees they have, which represent the size of the family they had and thousands and thousands of people that would be affected by this if we didn't respond. So the organizations involved um, in building this fund believe not only about the responsibility that we have, um, but really supporting these businesses as a core function of what makes uh, North Texas uh, work. So what I'm going to do now is tell you a little bit about some of the mechanics of the fund, how it works, you know, what it's made up of, how, how we, what our targets are and purpose are, and, um, and then that'll give us a chance to talk through specifically next, next stages of the questions that you may have. So the goal of the fund, as Creighton mentioned, was that it is a $5 million fund. Let's go one more slide. It's a $5 million fund primarily focused on supporting minority and women owned businesses. One of the things that we saw as the PPP, for example, and other funding alternatives became available was that 90%, more than 90% of the, of the minority and women owned businesses that were, um, were responding to the PPP were not getting that funding. And so that was, that was another instance of showcasing the immediacy of what we needed to have and how we needed to support that as quickly as possible. So what we've put together is a fund um, that is going to offer maximum loans in the amount of $25,000. Next slide. Um, there are going to be 0% interest loans with the ability to achieve loan forgiveness. It was a very specific reason that we did this. We wanted there to be an element of accountability um, with the small business owners that were getting the funds, but we didn't want that to, that to provide some undue um, stress or financial responsibility. And so by making it a 0% interest loan, um, we're, we're able to provide that first step and then secondarily giving the opportunity to achieve forgiveness. Now, it was very important to us when we started to talk about what forgiveness needed to look like was that it would be very palatable, very, very uh, achievable and, and realistically um, steps that would make your business better. Steps not only your business should be doing, but steps that your business um, um, needed to do and would do in order to be more successful in the coming, in the coming days. And so the conditions for forgiveness are that recipients must accomplish three out of the five milestones. First is um, they have the opportunity to join the Fast Art Mentor Program or any other mentor program that exists in North Texas, um, which will provide that small business owner with a free mentor. That mentor can help in every way from um, providing, as I mentioned before, strategic and tactical support or just helping them go through the process of making sure that they were getting the, um, the documents in place necessary to be able to effectively apply for our fund or any other fund that's out there. Um, second is you, you can submit a 2021 budget. You can submit a 2020 P&L projection. You can verify the documents um, that, and the uses of capital that you're having. So, you, so we're not really as specific on what you need to use the capital for. We just want to make sure that when we provide the capital that is used for what it, we're being told is used for. And then finally, you can complete and file your 2019 tax returns. If you do three out of those five things, that, that will constitute loan forgiveness. Um, and that's a great way for us to get you started. One of the, the elements that we thought were, was very important about this fund was that we were offering not only monetary, but non-monetary um, support and resources. So if you come to the Revive Dallas Fund website, apply for the, um, the, the, the funding that we have available and you are not eligible, you still will get access to a free mentor. You still will get access to all the resources that are available. We still will tell you about other funding alternatives and options that are available, and we will help you apply to those as well. Next slide. Um, the way that the forgiveness is going to work is if you choose not to have your loan forgiven, that 0% interest is going to be uh, for, for amounts under 15K, you'll have 24 months to pay off. For amounts between 15 and 25K, you'll have 36 months to pay it off. So you do have a good amount of time to, to, to be able to get yourself back into a position financially where you can afford to pay back the, the zero interest loan if you, if you choose to do it that way. Next slide. 
So the selection process has gone like this, and I'll move through this pretty quickly, but, but there is a pre-fault qualification process that exists on the Revive Dallas Fund website. And the reason that we did that was to make it quick and easy and clear for organizations to know whether they're eligible or not. One of the things that we've seen as we've worked with small businesses around funding options is that we don't want people to spend time um, on a funding alternative that may not be real for them. Um, they, for whatever reason, don't fit the requirements, um, don't have the right tax documents, whatever the case may be. So we ask you to go through this pre-qualification process. And then from there, as you're, if you're eligible, you'll, re you'll receive a link in the, the mail that will send you to um, the Lift Funds website. And that's where you will update the package, as we call it, or the, or the formal application, which is pretty simple. It's got three key components that they ask for. They ask for um, origin, um, company origination documents, they ask for three months of your financials, which you can connect into your bank through an online integration, a technology integration, and they ask for your 2018 taxes. Once again, all things that should be readily available at, um, at any small businesses uh, request, but also something that we can help you with a mentor. Um, once you apply for, put that through, you go into um, a lottery process. And that lottery process will be being managed through random.org. We'll bring everybody that that comes through the application. The initial application process uh, ends tomorrow. Um, we will then make uh, take the money that we have um, at this point and distribute that out. And then we'll go back and keep raising more money and distribute it out as many times as we need, need to. Um, there will be separate lotteries for MWBE and non-MWBE to make sure that we hit our our expressed goal, which is, as we said in the beginning, a majority of the funds that we're um, raising are going to go to minority owned or women to own businesses. And that's gonna be 51, a minimum of 51% of our funding will go to that. Thank you. Next slide. Um, so some people have asked us what the cost associated with this fund is. And, and so the cost at this point, based upon five, it's a, it's a variable cost, but based upon $5 million fund, it's gonna be about $460,000 or 9% of funds raised, broken down as follows. 8% um, fee to the lift fund, um, the interesting thing about both our partners, the Lift Fund and CFT, is they both lowered their traditional fee because they felt like it was so important that we get this funds out to the small businesses and, it's, and take as much of the money that we raise and get it directly to them. So Lift Fund's normal um, fee is substantially higher than this, and they've dropped down more than 10% of their fee to do that. Um, CFT, rather than taking their traditional a percentage fee um, did a one-time um, set fee of ten thousand dollars, which is clearly substantially less than a percent of five hundred thousand. And then the deck is taking is taking a one percent fee to do all the work that we're doing around marketing, promoting, originating, asking for money, and participating in the fund. So that's how the fund costs are broke down. Next slide. Our progress. So where we are today, um, as Creighton mentioned, we're, we're really about 8.65 million at this point, the goal of 5 million. We've had so many great organizations, individuals participate to date. We'll, sh we'll show you some of uh, those groups on the next page. Um, we've had 1,358 applicants of which 20 of those have been in Spanish. Of the 1,360 so applications, 913 applications meet the requirement for funding. So if you think about that, and we have a potential, not every loan will be $25,000, but a potential of $25,000, 913 applicants, the demand and need for this funding far out exceeds what we have available right now. We're not done. We're going to keep raising. We're going to keep doing this. But I think it needs to be um, highlighted that this is such a need in our community, and these organizations really, really need our help. I talked to a woman this afternoon who um, was just telling me the story of where she was and what's happened to her business just because she's an event planner and can no longer do event planning right now. And she is doing everything possible that she can to make herself eligible for this fund. Um, and we've met so many other great small businesses that have been in business for a long time and just um, were sort of blindsided by something that they couldn't control. Um, and so we want to do everything we can to help them. Of our respondents, 54% of them are female. 73% of our respondents are not white. 96.5% um, of our respondents have a greater than 15% de decrease in revenue since COVID started. That is one of the criteria for being eligible for the fund. 
72% uh, have applied for the PPP or other funding source, but 53% have not received it. And so the, as I mentioned before, we're gonna point people to this fund, but we're gonna point them to other funds as well. Um, the PPP still uh, is open till June 30th. And there's been several cases that I know of um, anecdotally of organizations that applied to the PPP early, didn't get it or didn't submit something correctly and now are applying and they're able to get it. So we just wanna make sure that every alternative for funding available we make, um, we make known to the applicants. And 98% of the companies have less, have, have $1.5 million or less in annual revenues, which is a, it's a criteria for us. Uh, and 97% of the companies have been in business since August 1st, 2019 or before. Um, as I mentioned before, this is a fund for for-profit companies, 94% of those respondents to this point are for-profits. Next slide. Um, some of the fund con contributors, as you'll see by looking at this page, are some of the great, some of the amazing organizations that we have here in North Texas, corporations, foundations, um, banks, individuals. Um, as you can see there, I won't list all of them, um, but there, these are a few of the ones that we've been working with and we have so many more coming down the line. So I, I, I wanna, for any of you that work for these organizations or associated with these organizations on this call, I want to say thank you very much for your contribution. We are, we, it will truly be making a substantial change in the lives of, uh, of small businesses in this area and specifically for the individual donors um, who have done so much. John Elijah Day, who's the chair of the Dallas Regional Chamber and CEO and founder of Access has been such a great proponent of this and such a, a uh, uh, evangelists inside the chamber and across the city. He is an entrepreneur. He has built his company up from, from the, the bare bones and has done a phenomenal job. He is the uh, example of what entrepreneurship um, can look like and does look like in North Texas. And then Andres Russo has done such an awesome job for us, specifically focusing in the Latino community and has worked tirelessly um, to try to help uh, support this fund and bring things in as well, as well as my my friends and colleagues from the, the Dallas Regional Chamber and the Citizens Council, thank you guys so much for where we are. Next one, and next slide. To keep these small businesses alive, we need partners to join us in standing to support these entrepreneurs in Dallas. And so we're gonna invite you to join us and participate in a lot of different ways. There's two main ways that you can do it. One is you can, you can give funds, and two is you can provide mentors. We've had, in addition to those uh, companies on the last slide, a lot of those companies are providing mentors as well. We have a, an overwhelming demand. If, if we have 1,400 applicants, that could be 1,400 companies that request mentors. We need to have that available, so there's different ways you can get involved. Uh, but I'll, Creighton, I'll turn it over to you right now. Um, thank you for the opportunity to share with this. I look forward to your questions. There's the last slide. We have some contact information specifically um, where you can um, send checks or wire money or ACS changes and then specifically of any questions after this call uh, both Sajil Desai and myself can be can be available to answer questions and talk through any of the specifics and go through so thank you for your time Trey thanks so much for the conversation also important to mention that revivedallas.com is the website in order to check out to get other details uh, also want to mention, if you're just joining us, thanks so much for dialing in here for the Zoom call. Uh, we are live also on Facebook through the DEC Network's Facebook page. So if you're just joining us and missed a little bit of Trey's presentation and a little bit of the background on the Revive Dallas Small, Small Business Relief Fund, you can always go back. Also, if you registered for today or participating, we will be sending you an email that has a link to this conversation as well. Um, also, we're already starting to get questions coming in for the Q&A and the chat feature. So if you've got questions, we want to get to all of those. But in the meantime, let me turn it over to the CEO of the Dallas Citizens Council and an essential partner in this particular effort, as Trey outlined, uh, Mr. Kelvin Walker. Kelvin, let me turn it over to you. Thank you, Creighton. I'm happy to be partnered with SunWest and the DEC and DRC and other um, organizations as it relates to raising money for small businesses. We're excited about the opportunity to continue to push both the private sector and any of our uh, members in the, in, the, in the community here in Dallas to support uh, the Revive Fund. Just want to provide a little context for the why of this and why we all need to support this as best we can. Um, small businesses in Dallas make up approximately 40% of the GDP. For, for the city. And so it's very critical for us to help as many of the small businesses get back on their feet as we can. Um, so 
we, we think that's a very, very, very important uh, thing that we need to, to make sure it happens. Um, did I lose you? Sorry. And the, the, other, the other interesting thing that we should be focused on is that when you look across the city, over 250,000 jobs are at risk to the extent we do not focus correctly and on our small business relief. So we're excited to continue to push our members within the Dallas Regional Chamber, Chamber as well as the Dallas Citizens Council to invest across uh, the, the, the Revive Fund and support some of the other relief efforts in the city. Uh, we believe that it takes all of us to be successful at this. We think it will take uh, the availability ability of the capital, both from the, from the DEC pro, uh, program, as well as some of the other ones with the city, the county, as well as North Texas Cares and all the work that the foundation community has done to make sure that our small businesses have the best opportunity to be successful. So with that, I'll turn it over to Dale Petrosky, who can help bring it home for us and, and, really, and really close for us. And Dale is uh, joining us by audio. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up uh, the slide of our partners for the Revived Dallas Small Business Relief Fund. And let me also mention before, Dale, you start, I want to just make a correction. The correct website is revivedallasfund.com, revivedallasfund.com. Um, so with that, Dale, let me turn it over to you. Okay. Thank you, Creighton. Thank you, Calvin. Thank you, Trey, all my good friends. You know, if you think about COVID and what it's done to all of us, it's been a shock to all of us. It's, it's, it's impacted all of our businesses uh, and our families' businesses and our family and our brothers and sisters' employment situations and so forth. But the fact is we're all gonna recover. For most small business owners, COVID really is life and death. Uh, their livelihood is their life. If their business goes down, their life goes down. And I think you and I can't even imagine the pressure that most small business owners and their employees are under. Thousands of good people. You and I know them personally. There are barbers and our hairstylists. There are local dry cleaner. They're the local pizzeria. Calvin shared some great stats about the impact of small business on our community. I'll give you one more. 97% of our businesses in DFW have less than 100 employees. Let me say that again. 97% of our businesses have less than 100 employees. Overwhelmingly, most have only three or four weeks worth of savings to get by. Uh, and, and, and then Trey talked about the number of people applying for this fund. There's so much demand that a few weeks ago, 3,900 small businesses applied for $26 million in city grants and loans. They only have 5 million. There's a $26 million need, but only 5 million to give out. So not all these businesses are gonna survive, but we have to help as many businesses as we can survive. These are good, hardworking people. And their back is against the wall. They don't know where to turn. And the Revived Dallas Fund has been started so that small business owners have a place to turn. And the, you know, the Dallas region, if you think about it, is really famous for its philanthropy. We traditionally give more on Giving Tuesday in Dallas than any other state in the nation. Our market, our city, our region gives more than almost every other state in the nation. So saving small business is our next big challenge. The clock is ticking for these folks. Many of these small business owners are a week or two away from going under. So we need your help now. $25,000 can save one small business. Uh, one funder uh, gave us enough to save 20 small businesses. but. You know, can you, can you help us out with one or four or, or six or eight or 10? And if you can do that, believe me, uh, it would be money well spent. You'd save a lot of lives. Dale, thank you very much. A, com a compelling message. Uh, so, so here are the headlines. We've got the DEC Network, formerly the Dallas Entrepreneurship Center, Communities Foundation of Texas, the Dallas Citizens Council, and the Dallas Regional Chamber. We all know that Dallas is a great place to live, to play, to work, 
and that we're a hub for entrepreneurship, a growing hub, really, if you look at the national statistics, and also for small business, for business of all size. But because of what we've just been through with COVID-19, we have some partners in business, particularly minority-owned businesses and women-owned businesses, where the fund is focused. And we have an opportunity to help. So maybe you're on the phone and maybe you're somebody who's interested in, in applying for a loan. That's fantastic and hopefully we've given you some valuable information. Hopefully you're on the phone because you're a potential donor or funder or I like to call them, call you an investor because you believe in the power of what small businesses are. And it's disturbing. If you drive around any community in Dallas right now, you see that doors, businesses that we all know and love that are part of our family, our lifestyle, any part of Dallas, have shuttered and that's disturbing. And as Dale so appropriately put it, these are individuals who this is their life and their livelihood. So there's an opportunity to help. The third option perhaps you're joining us is you may know someone. There's a great opportunity to reach out to folks and connect them to this network of individuals. And again, let me give you this, this website again. It's the revivedallasfund.com. We are live right now on Facebook at the conclusion of, of this particular call, uh, probably tomorrow, you'll get a link. Uh, so if you'd like to watch it again or share it with somebody, uh, and also you can go back and look on Facebook on the DEC Network's Facebook page and see this particular event if you wanna go through Trey's presentation. Uh, we've gotten a number of questions and we wanna be able to ask our distinguished hosts, Dale Petrosky, the CEO of the Dallas Regional Chamber, Kelvin Walker, the CEO of the Dallas Citizens Council, um, Trey Bowles, who's the co-founder and executive chair of the DEC Network, and also I mentioned Sajel Desai, who's the business engagement director from Communities Foundation of Texas, are all here ready to take your questions. The first goes to Mr. Andres Russo, who, as you saw on the slide with uh, our donors, is an individual donor, and Andres asks, when will the first grant go out? So we've got to start with him as a thank you, because uh, he's already stepped up. Trey, you want to take that question? Yeah, that, that is a great question. So as I mentioned, the, the initial um, application process, and there will be several, we believe, um, will end tomorrow night. And, and uh, Lift Fund's already been working through uh, the different organizations that are applying. And, and so as soon as um, all the money gets to the right place, we're, we're hoping that the first grant goes, uh, the first loan goes out next week. Okay, so we're ready to act, act quickly, fast. Yes, and you did not miss the boat if you've not already given. We are going to have, as I mentioned, um, <clears throat> we have lots of need, and so we, we may go through this process several times every time we get to a, 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 raise some more money, and we'll put that back into uh, the same structure and loan structure that we have that we discussed with you today. Okay, we've got another question from one of our participants. I want to make sure we get to all of those. Uh, this participant says, can an individual who's received the EDIL grant receive assistance via Revive Dallas to cover expenses the awarder EDIL grant didn't cover? Trey or someone else? Yeah, so, so the answer there is that, that, that receiving funds from another, um, another grant, another loan fund, um, or any other you know, alternative funding mechanism should not preclude you from um, applying and receiving funds through the, through the Revive uh, Dallas. <clears throat> I think the important thing to note is that we want to make sure what we're realizing is that um, although the money that's been provided by a lot of these sources is really, really helpful and positive, in some cases, it's just not enough for companies just to survive. And so just like we would, um, be, we would be happy to contribute to somebody who's already applied and received funding somewhere else, we're going to encourage people to apply to other funds as well that we know about and that we, we can push people to. Specifically on what you're spending the the money on, we'd have to talk through that. As I mentioned before, one of the things we like about this particular fund is it's being the, the business community that funded it is, is that we believe that an entrepreneur and small business owner knows what to, knows how to operate and run their business the best. And so we're trying to make, you know, the limited the number of constraints and requirements on things you can fund or not fund. Obviously, we don't want you going to uh, WinStar and putting it on uh, on a roulette table, but uh, anything other than that, we, we're going to have to trust you on that and work through with you, work with you on that. So if there are things, you know, I can't globally say yes, but if there are things that another grant wouldn't um, cover, this grant might be able, or this loan fund might be able to support that. Sajel, here's a question for you, of course, acknowledging that there's all kinds of great partners in play here with the Citizens Council, the Dallas Regional Chamber, CFT, DEC. Uh, how exactly does the fund part work? Who am I actually giving money to? And how is the fund structured? Can you take that? 
Yes, absolutely. So um, very early on, uh, when Trey um, came up with this concept of setting up the Revive Dallas Fund, um, he reached out to the Community Foundation, Communities Foundation of Texas, primarily for us to be a philanthropic partner, uh, where the funds can come to making a donation to the Revive Dallas Small Business Relief Fund at the Communities Foundation of Texas, which is set up as a field of interest fund. Uh, we were also um, philanthropic partners in the sense that we worked with Trey and team to help identify the CDFI partner, which is Lift Fund now. And so that is the role the Communities Foundation has played. So your money will come to us. And then we are working with Lift Fund. Um, so as soon as Lift Fund gets um, the critical mass of applications. We have enough money in the fund that we can, you know, start moving dollars across to Lift Fund. Uh, the loans will start getting made um, accordingly, and so that's that's the role we play here. But all your checks come to the Communities Foundation of Texas, and then we grant out to Lift Fund. So hopefully that helps. Okay, we've had a, a number of other comments and questions come in. Uh, one comment actually from a, an attendee here on the call indicated it only takes about five minutes to apply. Um, so if you are an applicant, it, it really is that easy. easy. C certainly different than, than the PPP application. A couple of quick questions. Um, if you, is, will it only go to recipients in the city of Dallas proper? I think that merits clarifications. And, and secondly, this is a quick one. Uh, what if you want to be a mentor, but not a donor? And what if you want to be a donor, but not a mentor? Is that possible? Oh, Trey, you're on mute. Those are great questions. Um, to answer the first one, yeah, based upon the way this, this version of the fund is set up, it's primarily for companies that um, exist and, and operate inside of the city of Dallas. Um, we're, we're encouraging people to apply otherwise because we talk to, to different funders all the time that have uh, different requirements or, or criteria on which they want to fund. So I wouldn't not apply um, so that we have your information and we can get in touch with you. But, but the expressed, this fund is for companies that are based in the city of Dallas. The okay. second question is, can you be a mentor and not a funder or be a funder and not a mentor? And the, and the answer is absolutely. Um, people can participate in whatever way they'd want um, and whatever way they have time for. Um, it's as a friend of mine says, you can serve with time, treasure, um, and you can, and you can, um, and through that, you will let you decide how you want to make that work. But please, you know, come in. There's an intake process. If you go to, um, if you see on the Revive Dallas Fund site, there is a link to go to the Fast Start Mentor Program. It's an intake form that you fill out that doesn't take very long, um, that we, we connect um, from a mentor perspective, the things you're passionate about, um, the things that you are experienced in and have an expertise in, and, the, and then we collect that with mentees who are asking them, what are your biggest needs? We, we provide those together. As of right now, we're near 300 um, uh, group introduction meetings since I think about a month, a month and a week ago. So um, the people are hearing and responding to the need for mentorship um, and, men and mentees I talk to every day are, are really receiving that value. Although money is great and an important thing to have, um, it's not necessarily the only way you can survive. And, and some of these uh, mentors that have been involved in these subject matter experts are making dramatic changes for these businesses, which is, is creating new life, new runway, and a new opportunity to exist so that they don't only um, survive this time, but thrive as they come out of the pandemic. Um, remember, uh, submit your questions. Having, we're having an easier time seeing the questions that come through on the Q&A. Uh, so that would be uh, my recommendation to get your question answered uh, the most quickly. And also, if you've got questions directed to our two special hosts, Kelvin Walker, who's the CEO of the Dallas Citizens Council, and Dale Petrosky, the president and CEO of the Dallas Regional Chamber, feel free to direct your questions to them. Um, and this is a sensitive question, but I think it's an important one. And, and all, this group has all discussed it. I don't think we want to be tone deaf. Um, in the national conversation, the national dialogue that's been going on for at least the, three, the last three weeks uh, following the homicide of, of George Floyd and, uh, of course, some of the, the, the national protests that have followed. What if I want to designate my donation specifically to a minority-owned business or to a Black-owned business? What's the appropriate way to do that through that, this fund, and is that possible? 
that, that's another great question. Um, yeah, we, we've had some requests to do things like this to make specific um, alt alternatives and options for funders based upon what their requirements or, or um, preferences are. Um, we're trying to accommodate every way we can. That's part of the reason why we ask people to go through a pre-qualification process because that data is so valuable and helpful so we can look and see pretty easily, you know, how many of this type of applicant do, do we have? How many of this industry focus do we have? How many of this, um, you know, revenue level do, they, do we have? So we're open to having those conversations. It gets pretty it gets pretty complex if every single person that add that brings five, ten, twenty five thousand dollars to the table has their own set of requirements. So we, we we're like we're, we'd like to fundamentally stick to ones we have, but we are open to discussing creative ways to make sure that we're helping the um, the philanthropic efforts of a lot of these great organizations be accomplished and and meet the goals that they're trying to um, realize. Very good. Thank you. Uh, a couple of questions here. First, if I did not upload my documents when I applied, will I have the opportunity to upload all of those documents? So in other words, I've may maybe this individual's done part of the application but hasn't finished it. Can they do it in stages and is there still a chance? So the pre-qualification process um, will end tonight at midnight, but the application process, um, the first one anyway, will end um, tomorrow, tomorrow night. And so if for some reason you don't get it in by then, can you come back later and restart or redo it? Absolutely, you can, but it will not be considered for funding until it's completed. Um, and you will be, that will be acknowledged by the LIF fund to you, um, you know, once you've completed that process and they have all the documents uploaded correctly. Okay, I, I have to say, uh, Trey, you're, you're, bless your heart, you're getting all the hardballs. But uh, <laughs> I know Kelvin, Dale, and Sajel are all glad to answer questions as well. So you guys jump in if you've got anything else to add. Kelvin, anything you want to say? I see you, you unmuted. Yeah, I think um, one of, when you reflect on the things that have occurred since the death of George Floyd, and a lot of people have said, what can we do? When you think about economic impact of supporting uh, you know, people of color and the minority owned businesses. Uh, this is another way to both first restart our economy and, and bring more opportunity to places where perhaps they haven't always been. Most of our, most of our minority owned businesses uh, largely employ other people like them. And so the, investing in this, I wouldn't even call it a donation, but investing in the revive fund is another way for you to see, you know, the dollars be multiplied in the community by saving, either saving or helping another business stay sustainable. Great point, great point. Uh, Sajel, you've posted a couple of links in the chat. Do you wanna tell everybody what you've put in there? Yes, absolutely. So um, one is of course the revivedallasfund.com website. That's where you will get all the information about the fund. I also encourage you to look at the FAQ section on it. The about us and FAQ section um, really should help answer a lot of the questions um, that you might have, whether you're a business um, owner or um, an interested investor in this particular fund. Uh, the other is if you're interested in mentoring, um, there's a link there um, to sign up to be a mentor um, on the DEC website. So I've included that as well. Um, and then the third was a YouTube link. Um, our mayor uh, was kind enough to endorse uh, the Revive Dallas Fund when we kicked it off in the end of May. And he also recorded a really nice uh, YouTube call to action, if you will. And so, uh, you know, it's on the Revive Dallas Fund website, but I wanted to share that link with you um, in case you were, you know, you, you needed extra motivation um, to either apply or to um, donate to us. So um, it, it's a wonderful call to action. So do take a look at that as well. Very good. So once again, if you're just joining us, and it looks like we have had a couple of people come on halfway through, this is a Zoom conversation about the Revive Dallas Small Business Relief Fund uh, being led by the DEC Network, formerly the Dallas Entrepreneurship Center, in collaboration with the Dallas Regional Chamber, the Dallas Citizens Council, and in partnership with Communities Foundation of Texas. Uh, we're at about $1.8, $1.9 million towards a $5 million effort to provide $25,000 grants to small business uh, owners and entrepreneurs throughout the Dallas area, particularly and specifically minority and women-owned businesses who have suffered or have had 
the trouble that we can only imagine here through COVID-19. Uh, a couple of other questions. Uh, this participant says, my company teaches yoga at a corporate level and also private lessons. Most of the time is only me teaching and doing all operations. When I have more classes uh, that need more people, then I contact yogis. I lost every client and they're not ready to bring classes yet for their comp to their companies. I need a lot of help financially and marketing. Uh, can you tell me, it says, can I apply? So maybe again, what are the, what are the big picture qualifications in order to be an applicant? So you have to have 15 employees or less. You have to have seen more than 15% decrease in income as a result of COVID. You cannot have more than 1.5 million in annual revenues. You do need to have an EIN number. Um, so if you're just doing this um, on the side and you don't have a business set up in any way, shape or form, um, that's, that's going to, that will prevent you from being eligible. Um, what can you do? You can reach out and connect with um, a mentor program like the Fast Start Mentor Program. We can help walk you through um, the process of how to apply, um, what sorts of documents we need, um, and, and show, show you how to do that, as well as if you need help you know, figuring out how to set up an actual a legal entity and business, can do that as well. But um, absolutely, we'd love to have you apply. A lot of resources available, and again, uh, revivedallasfund.com. Uh, we've got a great comment and a question from uh, a dear friend to Dallas with Bank of America, Jennifer Chandler. Jennifer says, this is great work, and we're pleased to see the collaboration in Dallas. Bank of America is pleased to be an investor uh, um, in Revive. It's great to see the website in Spanish as well. Can you speak to additional ways you're getting the word out to those small businesses in need, in particular, those that may be less digital or may need in-language materials. How can we help with this as well? Jennifer Chandler. Well, thank you, Jennifer, for those comments. And thank you for being an investor in the Revive Dallas Fund. Um, we have reached out to um, partners and organizations across the region that work with uh, small business owners and entrepreneurs across these regions specifically um, have seen a lot of help from the Dallas Black Chamber and the Greater Dallas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. There's been um, messages that have gone out through uh, partners that we have to their constituents, to their to the organizations they support and help. There's been a, to, to your to your point, there's been a lot of stuff done online, but as we've also reached out to try, trying to develop relationships with uh, centers of faith, um, neighborhood associations and people in that area, we've communicated and, and worked with the city of Dallas, who also had a great number of people apply for their fund. Uh, Dale spoke to some of those statistics earlier. And so we're trying to get the word out in every way we possibly can in every form we possibly can. But you know, um, and Jennifer, for all the work that you and Emily do for Bank of America, you know, you, no matter what you do, you don't feel like you've done enough. So any other suggestions, ideas, or people or ways that we can be getting the word out, please let us know. As I mentioned, even though the application, the initial application process is ending tomorrow, that does not mean that there's not an opportunity to continue to apply to, to this fund uh, in the coming days, weeks, and months. Very good. And uh, we've got one more question in queue. So again, if you've got other questions, please put those in the Q&A. In the meantime, uh, as a, just before I read this next one here, if I could ask the SunWest team to put up the PowerPoint again that shows the donors who have committed, both the individual and corporate donors who've made a commitment so far to the Revived Dallas Small Business Relief Fund. Really want to give uh, special thanks to, again, these uh, donors, corporate as well as individual. Um, appreciate their commitment. Um, okay, go really good provocative question here. It says, thanks for clarification about only uh, Dallas, city of Dallas, but, but why is this? Donors are from all of the regions and businesses outside of the city proper are in the same boat and hurting. Fair question. It's a great question. Um, I think, you know, there, as you've mentioned, there's so many entrepreneurs and small businesses in need, and there have been some great work that has been done in this region. Um, as we've mentioned, the city of Dallas has had their small business continuity fund. Um, the Dallas County just launched a fund earlier this week. Fort Worth has done some amazing things. Denton, Texas Women's University has done, there's so many things out there and we would love to be able to help all of them. Um, but we have to focus on uh, a little bits and pieces at a time. So as I mentioned, I don't know for some, for some of our partners and some of our funders and investors in this fund, they, they, uh, they may want to see loans go out to a broader audience, which we would welcome. 
um, but the, the the sort of the criteria and stipulations for this initial push was specifically focused on the city of Dallas. So even if you're not located in Dallas, please apply because there may be an opportunity for us to um, enlarge that that reach at some point. So perhaps the second five million dollar wave that uh, we go <laughs> we go out to to raise exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, quick question here, just a clarification. It sounds like this fund does not apply to single owner businesses, sole proprietors, self-employed individuals. Please confirm. Quick, is that a basic yes, Trey? Well, I mean, you can be a sole, sole proprietor, but still have a business. So, so, so as I mentioned, you have to have an EIN number to get an employee identification number. You've got to have a company. And so that company can be done in a lot of different ways. It doesn't have to be a full-fledged corporation. Um, it can be an LLC. It can be a DBA. There's a lot of different ways to do that, but that is a, that is a requirement. And then additionally, this particular fund is for for-profit businesses, not nonprofit. As I mentioned, I think about 94% of the companies that have applied are for-profit businesses, um, but that's just one of the stipulations for this particular fund. Trey, I'd like to add to that. If you are a not-for-profit that is looking for funding, we do, we do have our North Texas Cares program that ha is a collaboration across so many different funders, and that would be the best place for any nonprofits to apply to get support in our community. Okay, so before I give each of our hosts the final word, we'll, we'll go back in the same order, Kelvin. Uh, well, let's, we'll start with Sajel. Kelvin, Dale, and then back to Trey for the last word. Let me point out that the two slides that you're seeing on your screen are, again, contact information for both Trey Bowles and Sajel Desai. Uh, Trey with uh, the DEC Network, Sajel with Communities Foundation of Texas. Please reach out to them with any questions that you have as a potential donor, as a potential mentor, or a potential, a potential applicant. And also, of course, you see the slide with all of those who've contributed to the fund, who've invested in the fund uh, already. Okay, as we come to a close here, kind of with our final, uh, final few minutes on the call, thank you all again for participating. Let me, uh, let me provide each of our hosts with, uh, with a last final word. Sajal, you wanna go first? Absolutely. So uh, one thing I will say is this is one of those funds where speed is incredibly important. So if you are interested in supporting this fund, the earlier we can have a conversation and get your dollars in the fund, the quicker we can fund these startups. Uh, and because every day um, currently is very important. So um, I would really appreciate you sort of thinking about that. Um, if your corporation or family foundation has um, a requirement where you um, need us to apply for the grant uh, through you. We have a process to do that. So just feel free to reach out to me. I did want to mention uh, there's a slight typo in my email address here, um, which I just noticed. It's sdesai at cftexas.org. There's, uh, there's not, there you know, there should be two T's. There's one, just one T. Yes. One T. Um, but again, Texas. Yeah, exactly. It. Yes. And so, yes, I would just say, feel free to get in touch with us. If you um, need any further clarifications, we're here as a community foundation to help um, support any questions you have. Thank and you. And we are literally fixing that live right now. So when we put it back <laughs> up on the screen in a few minutes, Thank we'll have you. the right one up there. <laughs> we want to act fast. Uh, before I hand it to Dale, uh, just a, one more comment that came in. Uh, this says, so as an LLC with an EIN, still minimum of 15 employees required, or can one single self-employed individual under that LLC apply? I understood you, Trey, to say 15 or fewer, not Correct. minimum of 15. Correct. No, no greater than 15 employees. So yeah. one employee is perfect. Okay. So this attendee is indeed an applicant. Let's go uh, to Mr. Petrosky, President and CEO of the Dallas Regional Chamber for his last word. Okay. Thank you, Creighton. Well, this is such a, it's an uplifting conversation, you know, because we're, we're doing a lot of good to help a lot of folks. And, um, and we could be doing more good if we had more resources to do it. But as I sit here and I, I listen and I watch and I watch uh, all of you in very comfortable settings, you know, uh, uh, doing what you do. Not to say we haven't all been affected by COVID because we have, our businesses have, um, the revenues of all of our companies and all of our organizations have, and yet on a relative basis, we're gonna be okay. Uh, but there are an awful lot of people in small business right now, uh, very nervous, very worried about their futures, very worried about their livelihoods, very worried about their employees, uh, and they are not sitting there quite as comfortable as we are. And I think it's our duty to give them some hope, give them some 
support so that they can get back up on their feet and recreate the life they had before COVID and then carry through so they can get through this and, and come out the other end. And uh, that's what I keep thinking about as I, as I listen to the conversation today. Dale, thank you. And thank you for your leadership. Kelvin Walker, CEO of the Dallas Citizens Council. I always hate to follow Dale because he can sum it up so, so succinctly. Um, but I'd say that central to the success of Dallas is the success of our small businesses. Um, they're big contributors to our economy and to what we all uh, see every day, the services that we use and the lifestyle we enjoy. So I encourage all of us, if we can, to support uh, with capital uh, as an investor to the fund or certainly as a mentor so that we can make this fund successful and, and by, by doing so help all of our small businesses. Yeah, Kelvin, thank you very much. Well said. Uh, lots of you on the phone today, lots of great questions, and we appreciate uh, your participation and the chance to hear from Kelvin, Dale, Sagel, as well as Trey Bowles. And I'm going to give Trey here the last word. But before I do, I want to remind you all that if you missed part of the presentation, uh, you will get an email. Uh, if you have a colleague who registered but was not able to attend today, everyone who registered for today's Zoom call will get an email uh, with a link to this presentation. Um, also, if you need it faster because you are just dying to write a check but need a few more details or wanna share it with others who you know are dying to write a check, uh, this presentation uh, was broadcast on Facebook, Facebook Live on the DEC Network's Facebook page. So of course you can go there immediately after we conclude the call in order to watch it again. I wanna remind you that it's revivedallasfund.com. That's where you can get all the details. Of course, I wanna thank Mayor Johnson for his support of this important work. I wanna thank once again, the Dallas Regional Chamber, the Dallas Citizens Council, Communities Foundation of Texas, and all of those fantastic fund contributors, both individuals as well as corporate who've already stepped up. Uh, uh, again, it's $25,000 can help save a business. So if you are not a funder, uh, or someone who's in a position to help, hopefully you are, but if you're not, hopefully you know someone who is and that you can spread the word and get this critical information out because we've got a little bit of a delta to cover and a short time to do it to get to that $5 million goal. With that, let me turn it over to the co-founder of the DEC and chair, executive chairman, um, Trey Bowles for the last word. So, well, I'd like to thank everybody who made time to be here today. Um, this is such an important, issue. I have been a, uh, an entrepreneur myself my entire career, and the one thing I can do is empathize with the plight of a small business owner and recognizing and understanding how hard it is every day to, to, to make a business work, but how rewarding it is as well. And to have something like this, something come out of nowhere, something that was no one's fault, um, that was no one's responsibility, and cripple businesses to put businesses out of um, out of commission is not something that you know anybody could have first foreseen or anybody wants to support. Having said that, I think we have seen such leadership from organizations um, in town like the Dallas Regional Chamber, like the Dallas Citizens Council, um, like Communities Foundation, the Lift Fund, like the Dallas Bike Chamber and the Greater Dallas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I can go on and on the contributors on this phone call. One of the things I would ask you to think about is how can you contribute to this process? What can you do? How can you give to support the needs of our small business peers? Um, that can be through mentorship, that can be through funding, that can be through sharing this with somebody else, and that could be by being there and actually going out and, and, and supporting our small businesses through actually buying and purchasing things. Um, all that to be said, now is the time. This is what we do in Texas, this is what we do in Dallas and North Texas, is we support those that are in need. We've done such a great job, I think, as it relates to um, what Sejal was talking about with the North Texas Cares and the nonprofit side. We've been doing such a great job to help support um, the citizens of our, of our different cities. And now it's time for us to respond to the needs of our small businesses. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. Please let us know if you're a small business, how we can support and serve you. Uh, and thanks again for, for spending this hour with us today. So once again, thanks so much to all of our guests, Kelvin Walker from the Dallas Citizens Council, Dale Petrosky from the Dallas Regional Chamber, Sejal Desai from Communities Foundation of Texas and Trey Bowles from the DEC Network. 
Boy, Trey, your comments really resonate. Um, I'm, I'm not a career entrepreneur, but I'm a new small business owner, less than three years, and it has been harrowing. But as Dale so rightly put, pointed out, those of us who are on the call today, we're okay. There are so many who are not, and now is the time. Everybody has a way that they can contribute or step up or give back. And, um, you know, as they say, answer the call, and literally today is the call, and it's our turn. So Dallas, uh, revivedallasfund.com. You've got the contact information on your screen for Trey Bowles and Sajel Desai. Thank you so much for spending the hour with us. We hope you can help and we look forward to seeing you all soon. And in the meantime, we wish you and your families that you would all be safe and well. Have a great day on behalf of the SunWest Communications family. We'll see you again. Take care. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Creighton, Trey, Sajel, Kelvin. Thank you so much.